We are now 77 years since the first nuclear bombs were detonated on the Asian cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, killing an estimated 210,000 people as a result of the force of the explosions and the fires. Almost 50% of the official populations of those cities at the time with up to half a million more people dying over the following decades as a result of radiation sicknesses and various forms of cancers. Yet there are nine countries in the world who possess nuclear weapons. Six of these are located on or straddle the Asian continent, Russia, China, Israel, India, Pakistan, and North Korea. Although there are no certain figures because governments refuse to be transparent about their ability to mass murder civilians in their millions, what the experts at the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute found last year in 2021 is that these six countries have between them 7,056 nuclear weapons, unequally distributed between Russia with 6,255, China with 350, Israel with 90, India with 156, Pakistan with 165, and North Korea with an estimated 40. Each and every one of these bombs has a strength greater than those dropped in 1945. And remember, those two small bombs on two relatively small cities killed half of the population instantly. As a result of this, the limited war in which 100 of the 13,000 nuclear weapons we have on the planet are used, would, this would trigger a worldwide famine putting up to 2 billion people at risk of starvation. This is unprecedented in history. It is the end of civilization as we know it. Everything that we hold dear, everything that we love and cherish is gone. Take a moment and think about what you would do the moment you hear that a nuclear war has broken out in any part of the world. And if you're living close to where one of these bombs has been detonated, you're completely screwed. Your mobile phone won't work anymore because the electromagnetic pulse that was unleashed by the bomb will bring down electricity and telecommunication grids. You'll be in the dark and in silence, literally, not knowing what is happening in the outside world not knowing if any kind of humanitarian relief will come. And in reality, there will be no humanitarian relief. The International Committee of the Red Cross reported to the 2013 Conference on the Humanitarian Impacts of Nuclear Weapons in Oslo, Norway, that there is no possible humanitarian response that can be given in the case of nuclear war. In Hiroshima and Nagasaki, 90% of medical facilities were destroyed by the two bombs. In Hiroshima, out of 300 doctors in the city that day, 270 of them were killed. Out of 1,700 nurses, 1,600 of them were killed. Which countries will send humanitarian relief? What facilities will they work in? How will they be able to protect their workers from the radiation fallout, which will cover everything in radioactive dust? How will they access the power to run their machines? How will they be able to bring food for their own sustenance knowing that those they treat will not have access to it? The whole thing is unthinkable and must be prevented. But this is not even close to the end of the horror that will be unleashed. Including the whole of Russia, Asia is home to 174 operable nuclear power stations. China has 53, Russia 37, Japan 33, South Korea 24, India 23, and Pakistan 5. On top of this, there are smaller scale research reactors in Bangladesh, China, India, Indonesia, Japan, Kazakhstan, South Korea, North Korea, Malaysia, Pakistan, Vietnam, Iran, and Israel with others in development in Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Nuclear power stations are dependent on an unceasing supply of electricity to keep water pumping in order to keep the whole thing cool enough. Each one of the 174 operable power stations is another Chernobyl, another Fukushima waiting to happen. In this case though, 
There is no one coming to risk their lives to cover the melted nuclear fuel as those brave Soviet and Japanese technicians and engineers did in their day. Radiation will be spewed into the atmosphere. This is not fiction or scaremongering. Those who may have lost interest, there is still a war being waged in the Ukraine. Ukraine has 15 operable nuclear reactors. Damage to any of them, either accidental or intentional, will be an absolute catastrophe. This World Humanist Forum in Asia is thus very welcome because it is only through reaching out, networking and educating ourselves on important issues such as this that we will be able to create the change in human consciousness that is urgently required if we are to avoid nuclear winter. Let us be clear. The paradigms of the global system in which we live have created the situation we're in now. And it will not be until those paradigms have changed that we have the chance to change the course of human civilization. But what is the central paradigm on which our global society is based? I'm sure you all know it. The most important value in this society is money. The difference between having it and not having it is literally the difference between living and dying. This is the only reason why nuclear weapons exist. We have taken money from being a simple tool for exchanging goods and services, and we have turned it into something that must be accumulated at all costs in order for some to be able to acquire offensive amounts of money, amounts that it would take several lifetimes to spend. They must have access to the strongest forms of violence in order to impose their will on others. This violence comes in many forms, economic, psychological, sexual, etc. But the worst form is the physical violence. And the worst form of physical violence today is nuclear weapons. This forum, focusing on the Asian region, if it is going to make a useful contribution to the peace movement, has got to work on changing the paradigms on which our societies are based. Put human life as the central value and return money to being the benign tool that it has been for the vast majority of human history. We don't have much time to change the course of history. The climate is changing at a rapid pace and countries are not doing even a fraction of what they could to stop it.